my beautiful friends, and welcome to this lunar eclipse video. We're going to be talking about the lunar eclipse that's coming up at 15 degrees of Sagittarius just this Friday, so we're just a couple days away from it. Plus, today, as I record, Mercury has moved into its shadow time, getting prepared for retrograde. And with all of this coming, you know, the eclipse brings a shift in the energy, right? It's a lunar eclipse, so we're being told we need to end something, have an acknowledgement or an adjustment, really release something so that we can begin something fresh, but we have to release something that's already on the table, right? In order to have this fresh beginning with all of these energies kind of coming together in this culminating pot of the first of three eclipses we're going to see. We have an eclipse like every other week as we move through July. It's a, it's an, a high flying kind of energy. That's why I think it's really important for us to look at the actual astrology of this and actually talk about what this optimistic Sagittarian truth bearer kind of energy has got in store for us and the way that we can use it and some supporting aspects that can help as well. So let's jump in here and talk about what's going on. So first of all, the eclipse is going to be at 15 degrees and 34 minutes of Sagittarius. So when we're having an eclipse, this one is still the full moon of the month. It's a full moon lunar eclipse. This one is just a partial, right? So the full moon says something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So we do know that we're going to have a shift here. But instead of this just lasting and impacting us for about four weeks, we could see the impact of this shift, this bringing of culmination of ending or something for the, the next six months, right? And again, the energy that I think is super interesting is that because this is the full moon, we've already been looking at some version of this. It's already been on our table in some way, shape, or form. Now we're going to get some new ideas around it, but first we've got to put those other ones down. So you could watch that happen over the course of this next six months. In the energies of both Sagittarius, who's open-minded, our truth seeker, our adventurer, opposing Gemini, who's into the details, right? Sagittarius wants the big picture, and Gemini wants it's just the details, right? What's the details? How are we going to do that, right? Um, Sagittarius is ready to teach. Gemini is ready to learn, right? So as we see these energies opposing, one of the first things that came to my mind is how open-minded this particular moon is going to have to be. We've got a changing world out there. I don't know about you guys. Have you been see, feeling some of the pressure, some of the anxiety that's been going on, having to come back to your center a whole bunch of different times, maybe even just in the same day, right? So it's having to be open-minded about learning something else, having to be open-minded and being willing to maybe even detach from things being the way you thought they should be, information you thought you knew. And instead, on the other side where the sun is beaming nice and bright over here, we see that maybe there's more to learn. Venus is retrograde over here with the sun. We see them traveling together. And Venus in Gemini is already the value of information the value of the mind, the value of communication. And we've got lots of communication, lots of words, lots of ideas coming at us right now, including our own ideas. And we're trying to learn different things. And, you know, there's just a lot of information flying around. But Venus Retrograde asks us to look back. The information we've had in our lives, the information we've been listening to, the information we've been speaking and sharing, is it still valuable today, right? Hugged up there with the sun, they came into conjunction just a couple days ago, creating this new Sun-Venus cycle that is absolutely beautiful, but it is also an energy that says, where is my vitality most valuable and vibrant? So at this particular moon, we have this blast of what is the truth? What is my truth? And maybe I'm still on the journey to discover that through new information, right? I think it's absolutely a brilliant and beautiful moon for it. Now, as we consider this moon as well, because it is in the energy of Sagittarius, we have to consider what Sagittarius' ruling planet is doing. And Sagittarius' ruling planet is Jupiter, and he is over here retrograde, just nicely conjunct the energy of Pluto as well. So he is retrograde, so he's also flipped backwards. But in the energy of Capricorn, Capricorn is, is structure. It's Saturnian energy. It's structure. 
it's authority, it's responsibility, it's obligation, right? So here we are. We've got this moon happening over here. We're trying to be open-minded, rethink the things we know, question, why do I think that? Why do I believe that? Where are my new truths? Where are my truths, right? What's the value of the information coming in? Okay, I'm willing to see this do it different, but then there's this pressure where I can't quite get away from the structure. I can't quite expand away from the structure. So it feels like there's an energy almost kind of weighing down on us a little bit, right? And instead, we're having to come back to center and say, what's my truth? What's my truth? And not push it too much. Now, in quite another sense, when we just look at this in a global way, right, those those retrograde planets there in the structure have had us in our houses for quite some time, right? There's been a pressure to be in our homes, to be acting a certain way, the masks, all of these things. And Sagittarius is like, I just want to go outside. I want to go out. I want to see stuff. Suns in Gemini, I want to be social. I want to talk. Oh, Venus is in here. I want to talk to those people retrograde that I used to hang out with, right? (laughs) I want to talk to and hang out and expand my horizons with these people that I saw just eight weeks ago, right? So there's this intense urge, I think, at this full moon where our needs and our wants are always highlighted at um, a full moon. The polarities are lit up. But then we have this kind of energy over here that's like, hold on, stand still, right? So I'd be interested to hear and see where you're feeling the effects of that um, in your world. And sometimes the thing is, is right, it feels like maybe there are things um, blocking our freedom that are even bigger than we can even understand. It almost feels like something's got a thumb on us just a little bit, right? Now, I do think too, I have a daughter who's a Sagittarius, so I love that Sagittarian energy is typically very, very optimistic. It's got a kind of, the sun's going to shine again tomorrow attitude. So I think that'll be useful for us. And just because it's the truth bearer, you can't bear truth without being open-minded. So that's going to be a big theme that I think we see over and over again at this moon. So we're going to use this cool little app over at Astro Gold. Um, If you've never seen it, this is what the app looks like. You can get it on your iPad. If you do happen to use Solar Fire as your preferred software, Astro Gold is also compatible with Solar Fire. So you can do all the cool stuff in there as well. Now let's take a look at these actual astrological aspects and talk our way through this thing, okay? All right, so the first aspect we have when we're having a full moon is that the sun and the moon are going to be in opposition to each other. So my needs versus my wants, the polarities are highlighted here. Now because this is an eclipse as well, an eclipse blots out right? It does, this is a partial eclipse. So it's going to kind of blot out, kind of darken out our emotions over something. It resets them. It's like, hey, that's not working. This is a full moon. Adjust, adjust. That won't fit for us anymore, right? So you get this little mini reset that happens of your needs and your wants and a reassessment of what they are, right? Your need to expand and carry the truth and share your message and justice. But what's the truth in the details? What's the facts the sun over there in Gemini about what you've got to do, what you believe, what you're saying, right? Now, we also know because Venus and the sun are here in conjunction with each other and Venus is in her retrograde. You can't see it because it's hidden under the bar, but Venus is here in her retrograde. We are truly going back over the value of information, the value. What are the facts in this situation, right? Because you can't be a truth bearer if you're just bearing information that somebody else said, whether this is in your own life, whether it's in the media, whether it's something you teach, right? What's the truth and where are the facts and the details? What could you stand to still learn? That's a wonderful question at this full moon so that you can go out and beam, 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 beam very brightly your truth-seeking information, right? Now, Venus and the sun also traveling together here in Gemini. This is, again, the value of a beautiful mind that is motivated to learn, motivated to discuss, motivated to ask questions. Meanwhile, that Sagittarian moon on the other side could be saying, well, I already know. I have my position. I have my ideas. And think about this in your own life. Where where do you kind of feel like you've got your own mind, your own position? This is it. And maybe there's information on the other side. This is a beautiful time to see this. Sagittarian full moon. We are relieving ourselves from beliefs and ideas um, that don't serve us anymore, okay? Now, in the heat of all of this excitement where we see the polarities lit up here, we see that we've got what's called a mutable T-square, okay? 
So we've got the sun and both the moon here in square to Mars who's down here in Pisces. Now Mars is respectively, as you can see here, touching on both Neptune and Ceres. So we've got a lot going on here, but in this mutable T-square, a T-square, we focus on the apex point, which is right here. It is Mars, right? I've got these polarities lit up, my needs versus my wants. I think I know versus I'm trying to learn this or I need to learn this. Um, right? And this is coming through the lens of Mars. Now, this is a challenging aspect because Mars is frustrated here. He's like, you know, he's in Pisces. He's like, I'm ready to roll. I'm feeling froggy. And Pisces is like, no, we're going to slow down. We're in water. Mars is trying to run fire through water, right? That's going to smoke out really, really quickly. But it is certainly tapping in, in the energy of Pisces, things that have been lying in a place that's hidden, that has been in our subconscious, that has been um, someplace deeper than just surface level, right? And I'm trying to express this, be open-minded, find justice, expand my horizons out, and I can't quite get there because I've got the heat of this Mars energy taking on the brunt, being in square to both of these aspects. So I'm having a problem with some action. I'm having a problem with some expression here, right? Mars is heat. Mars and Pisces, excuse me, is heat beneath the surface, right? So what happens when we got something boiling beneath the surface? We kind of get this geyser that happens. Boom, we've got this water um, sign energy that could definitely be starting to happen, right? Now Mars here traveling just five degrees away, away from this Neptune energy as well. I think that this is still the time where We've got these ideas, we've got these thoughts, we've got these beliefs, these willingness to expand, right? These really long-term beliefs that have been hidden under the surface. And as they're presenting themselves, we're not exactly clear on the right action or we're not exactly clear on um, all of the right information even, right? So it's kind of like, what is the best next move? And this is where I say, and you'll hear many astrologers, I think, talking about this. You've got to ground back down into your center. We're called back to what is my truth, right? How do I do this? How do I show up as Sagittarian? How do I show up with the highest level integrity that's available, right? Now, having a T-square in mutable energy, when there's pressure put on mutable energies, one of the biggest things that they do besides they can, in a very positive light, demonstrate a beautiful amount of flexibility, go with the flow, adjust. Just because you're invited to a fight or a conversation doesn't mean you have to show up, right? So be flexible, but they worry. This can be a high worrying energy. So with Mars there, with Neptune there, with Ceres, how we work, what we do in the world, um, this could be an energy that just feels like it's some worry for you. You maybe are in high disagreement with some things that you're seeing, but there's this underlying sense of worry that's happening there, right? Now we've got some helpers. When you get a tense aspect like a mutable T-square happening here, putting pressure on Mars, who's like digging up things from beneath the surface. We look for the helpers in this particular arena, and we do have a couple, okay? So first of all, we have got Mercury, who's right here. He's in the energy of Cancer at this particular point. Like I said, he's already slowing down and in shadow time, getting ready for his retrograde. But this Mercury energy first of all, is in a beautiful sextile. And when the planets have sex, that's good for us with Uranus. Okay, so the sextile is a pocket of opportunity running just through the corner of this T-square, right? It's a pocket of opportunity, success, movement, but it's not just like an ease. It's a pocket of opportunity that you will intelligently take action on. You will use this. Mercury is the energy of how we communicate, right? And it's in the energy of cancer. This is emotional intelligence. The words that come out of your mouth are going to hit another person. They're going to need to be received somewhere. So how can you tap into your own emotional intelligence to make sure that you are communicating at that highest Sagittarian integrity level of operation, right? In its highest form. Now, this Uranian energy over here in Taurus is shaking up your ideas, right? 
shaking up these relationships, shaking up your fixed Taurus ideas about things, right? I think this is also um, an energy where it's like, maybe you've been trying something the same way for a very long time. And as you meet this sextile of thinking and action, maybe if you try it a different way or you say it a different way or you approach it a different way, there can be an outcome of something that is an, a successful, surprising opportunity to you, right? Like I said, just because somebody invites you to a fight or to a panic session or to worry doesn't mean you have to show up. What if you say, you know what, hold on, I'm a little bit afraid. Let me pause here. And uh, let me just do this for a minute, right? Instead of jumping into the immediate action or, you know what? I'm, I'm not afraid right now. I actually feel very, very good about my day. I feel good about where I'm at. And you just take the honest action of being right where you are. Be your own truth bearer. This is not just go be the truth bearer in the world. It starts at home, right? Tell the truth of you to you. How are you emotionally? How is your home? Communicate with you about home, cancer energy, and how you're doing and watch the surprising results that are able to come from just the level of high integrity truth bearing into your own life. I feel like the Sagittarian moon is so optimistic and open for that, right? Now, we also see too, though, that um, Mercury here is in square to Chiron, who is in Aries. Now, Chiron is our wounded healer, but it's also the place where it's like Chiron can just be gold, right? This is the deepest wound. We, we know it so well because we've experienced it, but we know it so well because we've experienced it that if we actually give it away to someone else, we talk to them, we meet them, we share the experience of it, we actually begin to heal. We actually have benefit, right? It's like in order to have the healing you have to give the healing. So while Mercury's in Cancer and we're working on that emotional intelligence, kind conversation while being honest and direct, right? And Cancer doesn't really like to be direct, so it's kind of indirect, right? Um, taking on this Chiron in Aries, which is very much so about the identity, right? So in a square, I've got my identity being pushed on by the information I'm receiving over here that's maybe very sensitive. You know, plus we've had this mutable T-square, I'm worried. Maybe I'm feeling a little bit edgy with some things that are going on. Now a square here, I think, is absolutely beautiful because it's a 911. It doesn't feel good. It puts you under tension. It puts you under pressure. The identity is being pushed on, right? If you will take the square to the positive. It's asking you to take a different action, which we saw. We've got Mercury and Uranus in a position for you to take a different action, take a different approach, say it differently, perceive it differently. And you can actually use this square to the greatest benefit where it's like, hold on. That doesn't have to mean anything serious about me. I don't have to take that so personally. What if I change that old idea and I let it go? Maybe it doesn't serve the lifetime I'm trying to live anymore. And if I put it down, it doesn't damage my identity. In fact, it allows it to heal and to spring and to move forward. And see, we've got a lot going on in the world right now. So there are definitely some big cultural ideas that I could get into here. And we could look at those as the things that we surrender and put down and we're open-minded to. But I really would love you guys to think about this in your own life. You know, where have you been saying to yourself, I would love to try something different. Oh man, I would really love to do whatever. But that would mean I have to maybe get a new group of friends or how would I do that? How would I even start doing that? And what does that mean to my identity? right? This place of getting the Chiron wound of our identity pushed on, we defend first. And instead, we've got an opportunity at this moon to say, maybe it can just be different. Maybe it's okay if I come at this differently and I baby step my way to the healing of this different identity that I'm carrying around out there or to my ideas of myself, right? But that Mars in Pisces that we have happening down here, where is shame or blame or creativity coming up for you and you've maybe not been able to acknowledge that before. The integrity and the truth bearer of that Sagittarian moon right here is going to say, grab it. Let's do this. 
Let's experience this. This is our ride for the taking, right? Now, remember, the full moon is asking us to end something, acknowledge something, or make an adjustment over this next six months. So certainly one of the things that we're going to acknowledge and adjust is the idea that the ideas we've had for ourselves, our lives, our cultures, our communities, they maybe need to widen. We need to bring in more information, more learning, valuable content into our lives so that we can baby step into these new identities and so that we can have this different experience, right? So that we can heal these things from the past where Mars is back there bringing them up from under the surface, right? So we're kind of, there's some, there's some push, there's some intensity when Mars pushes things out of hiding, right? And that could just be even, you've been an accountant for a hundred years and you found out you're a really good tarot reader. Oh man. You're going to have to shed some ideas about who you are, what you've been doing, what you think about the world, and allow yourself to be open to the value of the beautiful other side of this full moon, which is the sun and Venus welcoming you to your new cycle just as much as they've started their own. So I think that uh, it's going to be, it, you've probably been feeling the impact of the eclipse energy vibrating down there anyways. Mars vibrating through Pisces. We've been feeling some things come up where it's like, I'm not sure what that is. It's the itchy tag I talk about, right? Like, what is that? What is, what is that going on over there, right? And we haven't maybe quite been able to put our fingers exactly on it. But at this particular lunar eclipse, I think we get an idea that the way we work with that is new information, walking in our own truths, tell the truth in public. If you're good, say you're good. If you're struggling, say you're struggling. If you know everything, then you're wrong. I assure you, if you don't know anything, I think you're wrong. Where's the place in the middle where you can have someone add to your cup and you can go add to theirs as well so that we can all be a little bit better. So pretty optimistic moon, enough pressure, I think, to get us moving and thinking and being uncomfortable enough to change for sure. And this is not just at the global level, but I like to show it to you in the personal level as well. All right, you guys, I hope you can like this video, comment, share, subscribe. Hopefully you can see all of this. I'm trying out new technologies over here. And until I get it right, and this is perfect for us to do this together, I'm going to just keep trying, okay? All right, you guys, hopefully I will get to see you tomorrow. You will show up for the Eat and Greet where I've got Master Astrologer Stephen Forrest coming over. We're talking about the different lunar phases of the moon and when you were born under them and what happens as you progress through them. And just had a conversation an hour ago. Master Astrologer Rick Levine is going to come back during retrograde because we're going to redo our attempt to have an eat and greet together so that we can teach and learn and share information with you guys again. So thank you everybody who showed up for that one and tried to stick with us. We finally just had to take the video down, but we're going to bring it back. So I have a question for you as I end this video. Master Astrologer Rick Levine coming back. What do you guys want us to talk about? What do you want to know about? You want to know about the Saturn return? You want to know about aspects? Give me some ideas of what you'd like to know about under this video in the comment section down below. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.